Welcome to Idea Springs Founder in Focus podcast series. Today I'll be talking to Bharat uh, from Fix44, phenomenal company uh, trying to do something very innovative in the protein space. So Bharat, welcome to Idea Springs uh, Founder in Focus podcast series, and great to have you here. Thank you for having um, me. We'd love to, you know, generally have a, a discussion on your journey of uh, having founded Fix44. What motivated you to do that, and then your plans for taking forward this company and specifically impact uh, your product is going to have on the health of human beings in general, because I know that has been one of your key thoughts in creating this company. So before, like, if we start with the very first uh, question on why Fix44? What made you, you know, start Fix44? Because you are from engineering background and suddenly you have completely metamorphized or, or you know, moved to a biotech or synthetic biology. So, so let's start from there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Maybe I think um, uh, I can I can start by talking a little bit about what I did earlier and segue into what I'm working on now to help you better uh, make better sense of what is it that I'm doing and why am mm-hmm. I doing it in the first place. So I, like you said, um, my background is very different. Um, the the greater part of the last decade or so before I started this company. Um, I've been in product lead roles at consumer internet technology businesses, the last one being at Google. Before that, I was at Amazon. Before that, I was at an ed tech company. Before that, I was the founder of an ed tech company. So it's um, it's um, no surprise that when you see what I'm doing right now, it's a far cry from all of these things. Uh, and the simple reason why I started something in this space is because I've always wanted to do something in climate sustainability and impact space, so to speak. And when I was at Google, I took a sabbatical to try and figure out what I want to do next. And when I looked at all the avenues where I could do some meaningful work in the climate sustainability and impact space, the usual suspects came up, right? So the if in popular culture, if you ask an average individual about what needs to be done to fix climate, more often than not, they'd say, you put enough EVs on the road, you put enough solar panels, you put enough windmills out there, you've solved the climate problem or you've solved the sustainability problem. That's not true. That is far from the truth. The reality is there are much harder problems like construction, cement, steel and food, which is animal derived as well as plant derived food has a significant impact on the planet in terms of land use, water use and greenhouse gas emissions, as well as human health. Some of the food choices that we make are not are inherently unhealthy to the point that they are leading us to, le- uh, to live relatively poor quality, healthy lives. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's something that attracted me. And uh, specifically, Fix44, the reason I chose was three things came together for me in that. Firstly, I have a background in biochemistry. I graduated with a, um, with a master's degree from IIT Kharagpur in industrial chemistry with specialization in biochemistry. It's something that I understood inherently when I learned about precision fermentation, when I learned about uh, how you can make alternatives to food that you currently have, but in a healthier as well as a more sustainable manner. That was much easier for me to understand than something to do with battery tech or Mm -hmm. semiconductors, so to speak. And second reason was that the sheer amount of impact that was possible on climate, planet, as well as human health became evident to me the more and more I read about this. Um, Inherently, water guzzling, inherently extreme high amount of carbon dioxide emissions, inherently very high land usage is a systemic problem of how we produce most of our food, whether it is animal derived or plant derived. And very little is being done in this regard from a technology point of view. So that is the second reason why I got attracted to it. So if I'm spending my time it might to make it worth it. It has to be a big enough problem, and the impact has to be substantial. That's the reason. And the third is, as a consumer myself, I always felt that there is a need for better quality alternatives, whether it is dairy, whether it is sugar, whether it is anything that you get from your current sources. There are there should be a better way of going about producing it. And as a consumer, I felt that there is a need, and hence I said, okay, there. I I wanted to start a company that tries to solve all of these problems identified dairy as our starting point and then from there we moved on from dairy to more interesting novel proteins that I'll speak about um, uh, later during our chat as well 
um, the, so that's that's the story of why I started fix no, good good so so you said human health and sustainability which was which of the two was more important to you or you give equal weightage to both so to me I, I think sustainability is slightly more important than human health because of the sheer reason that there are a lot of people working on human health hmm. not so many working on sustainability and the most urgent and imminent challenge when that is facing humanity today when you think about it is an existential threat of climate change so just for that reason i would weigh climate and sustainability as a more important reason for doing this than just human health of course human health and impact on uh, positive health outcomes is a noble endeavor in and of itself but i do believe that there are a lot of very talented young people who are working in that space and that's why i would weigh this higher right so so when you got got going with fix 44 you know you initially you said dairy right you started off with that, but then you also now in the company, we have evolved to uh, sugar substitute, protein as a sugar substitute, right? So how did that journey come about? You yeah. know, is it, is it uh, because scientifically or, you know, in, in, in the process of creating dairy away proteins, hmm. you saw the evolution to sugar because the sweetness or how, how did that emerge? Yeah. Because I, I'm really very interested on the sugar side of it yeah. uh, because of the you know issue that in india is a diabetic, yeah, it's a diabetic capital, yeah, right? capital right so uh, how did that evolve so the um actually the market forces in a way made us realize a few things which uh which helped us evolve the way we are going about building a company right? so we started off with dairy proteins we made whey protein like I wouldn't say there are lots of companies, but there are a few other companies in the world as well who managed to make whey protein, but without the animal, using microbes through a technology called precision fermentation. And we, that, we did that. But once we did that and we started looking out into the market, what we realized is the consumer acceptance for a product is only going to be there when you hit the right cost structure. You can have a product that replaces whey protein, but if it is retailing at four times, five times higher price than the animal-derived product, which is the whey from a cow or a, or a buffalo, um, you have a very limited market. That forced us to think about whether this is the way we want to approach it. So that was the first um, uh, realization. The second is, then we said, okay, we, if you do just whey, that is not enough. We have to make something better than whey, and we internally used to jokingly call it a way plus plus strategy. So it's not enough just to do way, we have to do way plus plus. And then we started looking at, okay, if you have to do something better than way, let's look at where all whey protein is used and then see if there is something that emerges from that. We started looking at whey protein and you'll find it hard to believe, but once you start noticing it, it becomes evident to you that it's very hard to find a product where whey protein goes and sugar is not there. Mm. It's almost impossible to find one. Why? Because dairy and sugar almost kind of go together. Then we said, okay, can milk and sugar, milk can, and sugar, any, any anything you any yeah. any dessert, anything you you take desserts, you take yogurt, you take um, biscuits, cookies, confectionery, baking goods, beverages. Wherever there's dairy, there's sugar. That is the reason we said, okay, if we can combine these two into a single product. We can do two things. One is we can create a clear differentiator versus everyone else in the world because we'll create our own IP in terms of a product and that no one else can ape. And second, we can address a real customer need because customers are actually adding both of these things into their product. So the idea, the genesis of the idea was, okay, let's do something better than whey. Whey and sugar almost always go together. Then you also have this can protein act as a sweetener or a sugar replacement trend also catching up? We said, okay, let's add both of them together. And thanks to my background in Google and some level of exposure to AlphaFold earlier, we pioneered sort of in at least in Indian startup uh, landscape, the use of AlphaFold to do a lot of protein folding studies where we created fusion proteins. A fusion protein is basically, think of it as two proteins, but they are made fused together. You are not fusing them later on, but actually this microbe makes them together. But to make a fused protein, you need to see if they assume a folded shape that gives them both the functionality. So you want the functionality of a whey protein and you want the functionality of the sweet peptide as well. Why? Whey protein will give you the whey protein functionalities in your product, whether it is a beverage or a dessert or a confectionery item. And 
the sweet protein will also goes and docks on the same receptor that sugar does mm-hmm. on your tongue and triggers the response to brain saying that you are eating something sweet but if the folding is off for whatever reason it will not trigger that sweet response so we modeled thousands of molecules using alpha fold to find the ones that will actually function the way we want whey protein to function and sugar to function narrowed it down to a few tens of them engineered strains to make those proteins and ended up discovering what we call sway so that is the genesis of this thing and the reason why we it's it's one thing to say that okay this product is essential for us to survive in the market it is another to say that we want to create a differentiation but it is also in line with our health and climate aspirations what we tend to forget is sugar from sugar cane is an extremely water intensive and a land intensive paddy and sugar are at the worst is crazy and especially in india india is the largest producer it's the cheapest sugar that you can find in the world massive production there are a lot of vested interests in continuation of the sugar industry but we also know the the downside of having sugar available ubiquitously and so cheap we are the diabetes capital for a reason right so and we are as a culture very obsessed with sweetness as well we are sweetness is equivalent to celebration sweetness is equivalent to goodness in life if there is anything good that happens in your life if you if you do a religious ceremony if you do a birthday celebration any celebration any celebration they you actually and in fact in a lot of households you make something called panchamratam if you are aware of it it's actually a mix of dairy and sugar thing is all the forms of dairy and uh, sugar and all the sweets as well right so uh, in that sense we are obsessed with sugar sugar is also like dairy a fairly water intensive and um, environmentally expensive product if you can combine both of them you actually address climate sustainability concerns by reducing land use by reducing water use and reducing greenhouse gas emissions by combination right now so each kilogram of sway reduces land water use and greenhouse gas emissions of 1 kilogram of whey protein as well as 1 200 kilograms of sugar actually because it is 200 times sweeter than sugar so 1 kilogram works does the same job as 1 kg of whey protein and 200 kilograms of sugar so all of those combined you are able to save land use water use and greenhouse gas emissions in addition to that by encouraging consumers to consume more of protein based sweetener you are also addressing the the significant issue of human health mm. right so you are taking the most important that's yeah. one of the mm. so you are taking them away from sugar as well as other sugar alternatives that are not very healthy so there are a lot of sugar alternatives today non protein sugar alternatives like erythritol like um, aspartame which are proven through studies to have negative health impacts even in healthy individuals let alone elderly let alone children let alone um, uh, pregnant women right so in that sense a sugar alternative that is better for you is actually a protein based sugar no, no, so, so that's the reason why what's been the most difficult part in your journey so far in this company right is it discovery of the proteins uh, that is combination of milk and uh, sway yep. way and uh, sweet or now once you have discovered it engineering it and building it to scale so so where are you so finding the challenges in the company yeah it's funny that you ask because when we started i thought the first part will be more difficult Okay. but um thanks to the systems that were available although it was difficult it took much lesser time than it is taking to to scale up to optimize and to eventually get the cost structure right i think that is where the crux of the company is and that is where the crux of the the uh, the company for most of the product companies is so once you've identified you've created or you've imagined a a product mm. and you've created a prototype mm. and you you've tested it and you know that it does the job that it is supposed to do now you have to take it to the customers so for the customers it's just a promise hey here's a protein that is sweet and that has also got dairy taste by the way it is very good for you as well as good for the environment the customer says all of this is great but how much does it cost when can you supply is it approved these are the main three questions that they will ask i think the the more difficult part and the longer journey is in the latter than in the 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 former the former part does afford us the differentiation factor no one can make this product because we have patented it but just because we have patented it and it is 
our ip doesn't mean that customer is going to buy it the harder part i think is in getting it to the customer yeah. so there are substitutes for uh, um milk that are reasonably healthy right and they have soy milk and yes and i don't think there is anything that is substitute for sugar that is health considered quote and quote healthy right because people say you know you know in terms of uh, you know if you use sugar substitute they say it, the effects are not as good and anything that you use as a sugar substitute you know it's not too yeah. as good that's so how do you see your product now impacting that aspect where you know it's a protein so it's obviously obviously good for you but how do you see that evolving yeah okay now so i think the way you would have to look at sugar alternatives is people are aware of sugar alternatives uh, alternatives as not being very healthy but in a cost benefit trade off they say it's better than diabetes hmm. so if you are talking about saccharin sucralose or aspartame or erythritol where in case of erythritol and aspartame there are several studies linking it to cardiovascular disease over a period of time for prolonged exposure let's say they still say it's better than diabetes today so that sort of cost benefit analysis consumers are lesser of the two evils yeah lesser of the two they are forced to make this because they don't have alternatives that do not have any uh, negative impacts as such that is where protein sweeteners have a significant upper hand you you are consuming protein but your brain is telling you that it is sweet your tongue is telling you that it is sweet your gut is metabolizing it just like protein it gets fully metabolized because whatever we made is actually already being consumed it's 80% similar to whey protein which is a milk protein that most of the people are consuming and the sugar protein or the sugar peptide part is also from nature nature inspired so people have humans have had a history of consuming this protein at least in parts of africa for centuries if not uh, more so in that sense we know that it is safer for you because you can fully digest it we know that it is safer for you because it does not throw your gut microbiome out of order with some of these sugar substitutes too so that way i think it strengthens the proposition of a sugar alternative much beyond what the current alternatives are able to offer uh, that is where i think we have a um um uh, the the usp of our product has the ability to outpace and take away the market from the existing sugar alternatives so what's what's your vision or goal for the company you know what you would you feel good at say 5 years 10 years down the road see in having accomplished something what you know what would that be yeah i see the, it's i would measure the success of the company in terms of the the, the very reason why i started the company right the impact on environment and impact on human health and it will simply come down to if we have, if we ship tons of product what that means is we've taken away several tons worth of wastage of land a uh, wastage of water in terms of water usage several hundreds of hectares of thousands of hectares of land saved and several tons of carbon dioxide equivalent reduced in addition to that how many people have been given a viable alternative to sugar so that they can continue to live happy healthy lives and eat our eats more and what continue to eat sweet so how many people have be, been able to uh, get off sugar in a way is so i i would measure impact in this much more than what is the revenue of the company or what uh, is the margin of the company of course that, those are important survival uh, metrics they are important from a funding point of view they are important from a company growth uh, perspective but the real way in way in which i would be happy in measuring outcome uh, is through the impact through environmental which is land use reduction water use reduction carbon dioxide equivalent emissions reduction and on, in terms of human health how many people how many diabetics have now been able to regularly consume sugar without further um, making their condition adverse and so many people have been able to live healthy lives by continuing to consume um plus sweet now that i don't know we are very very happy to be part of the journey of fix for you and i wish you all the luck and i want to see this coming into fusion and uh, you know where people can eat sweets without thinking twice out of the road of that day thank you so much much appreciated and thanks for all of the the support um in our journey as well we are really lucky to have you and yeah. your support thanks bro